Over the years, we saw Apple cross Intel in mobile CPU performance with the A-series chips used widely for iPads and iPhones by Apple. Apple has switched to Intel from PowerPC since it provides more performance per watt in the year 2005. In today's video, we're going to understand Apple's new chip through an introduction to ARM, how the M1 chip works, the future of Apple Silicon, and as a bonus, talk about some of the CPUs other than Intel and AMD. RISC or Reduced Instruction Set Computer is a type of microprocessor architecture that utilizes a small, highly optimized set of instruction rather than a more specialized set of instruction often found in other types of architectures. The first RISC project came from IBM Stanford and UC Berkeley in the late 70s and the early 80s. The IBM 801, Stanford MIPS and Berkeley RISC 1 and 2 were all designed with similar philosophy which has come to be known as RISC. A common misunderstanding of the phrase of reduced instruction set computer is that the instructions are simply eliminated resulting in a smaller set of instructions. The term reduced in that phrase was intended to describe the fact the amount of work any single instruction accomplishes is reduced at most a single data memory cycle compared to the complex instructions of CISC CPUs that require dozens of memory data cycles to execute a single instruction. Most RISC architectures have fixed length instructions commonly known as 32 bits and a simple encoding which simplifies fetch, decode and logic issues considerably. One of the drawbacks of the 32-bit instructions is reduced code density, which is more adverse a characteristic in embedded computing than it is in workstation and server. To address this problem, several architectures such as ARM, Power ISA, MIPS, RISC-V have come up. Talking about ARM, it is based on RISC. Due to their lower costs, minimum power consumption and lower heat generation than their competitors, ARM processors are desirable for light, portable, battery-powered devices, that is smartphones. All of the smartphones are based on these ARM processors and so is Apple's M1 based on the same ARM architecture. Having an Intel chip was much slower for Apple since before this, Apple had CPU, I.O., security. Apple has in integrated all these into one single chip since it makes it faster to communicate. The unified memory architecture that Apple has included is also a major factor because all of the technologies in the M1 can access the same data without having to swap between multiple pools of memory. The M1 chip has built-in neural engine a component that Apple first started adding to its A-series chips a few years ago. The neural chip is designed to accelerate machine learning tasks across the Mac for things like video analysis, voice recognition, image processing and more. The 16-core neural engine is capable of 11 trillion operations per second for up to 15 times faster machine learning performance compared to previous generation of models which have moved to M1. The M1 chip is the most powerful chip that Apple has created to date and it is similar to A14 chip in the latest iPhone and iPad Air models built on a 5 nanometer processor by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC. TSMC builds all Apple's chip and has done so for many years. The next generation Apple Silicon chip will also apparently support up to 64 gigs of memory compared to the current maximum of 16 gigs. This would in line with the current Intel based 16 inch MacBook Pro which is available up to 64 gigs of RAM. The new chip is also set to support additional Thunderbolt 4 ports for expanded connectivity. The new chip is basically M2. Now the M1 chip impressed us and the rest of the computer world with performance that can beat the latest 11th gen Intel Target Lake 
processors with the M2, it is expected to go up even further. The M2 is expected to have a 4 nanometer fabrication node rather than the 5 nanometer process that the previous version uses, that is the M1. As such, we can expect more performance, better efficiency for M2 thanks to an increase in transistors on the slice of silicon. Now, another leak that suggests that the M2 is tipped to come with 12 CPU cores, 4 more than the M1 with 8 cores set to handle high performance tasks and a quarter for the efficiency cores for less demanding tasks. And the 7 to 8 core GPU of M1 will be increased to a 16 core on M2. As such, we can expect a serious boost in the graphic processing power which should improve the overall gaming performance as well as make Max with this chip more capable for handling demanding video rendering and based workloads. Another chip that is expected to come is the M1X chip which will be the new configuration of the M1. It will be a speedier version of the same basic processor with more processor cores and more graphics version. The M1 chip offers 8 graphics cores or 7 in the case of entry level MacBook Air and entry level 24 inch iMac. For the M1X we can expect to see a 16 core GPU. The benchmark indicate that there will be 256 execution units for the M1X compared to 128 execution units in M1. The benchmarks indicate that there will be the same 16 gigs of maximum RAM in M1X. The benchmark also include or indicate that M1X will run up to 3 displays which will be an improvement compared to the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro which can only support one additional display. The M1 Mac Mini can at least run an Apple XDR and a 4K display together. Now let us talk about some of the lesser known CPUs of the world. Elbrus. Named after the Mount Elbrus, the highest point in Russian Federation, the Elbrus architecture or the Elbrus architecture is another attempt at tech self-sufficiency. Elbrus is designed solely to meet the Russian government's secure hard computing need. There are no consumer-facing Elbrus parts in Moscow hardware stores. Russian government has two main uses for the Elbrus. HPC servers for academia and research and secure endpoint PCs for the military and other sensitive sectors. Shakti, an IoT and embedded platform made in India. The word Shakti means strength. Researcher at the Indian Institute of Technology unveiled a RISC-V based platform in 2018. Indian silicon foundries are still at their infancy. As a result, the latest Shakti E processor power are built on the 180 nanometer processor and clocks up to 100 megahertz. These chips aren't built for mainstream workloads. Instead, Shakti's E series focuses on low power, IoT, and embedded use cases such as sensors.